Hey coin collectors and welcome to DC Coin Roll International Coin Channel and today it's the 1991 Roosevelt dime from the United States of America for the Denver Mint the best they've ever had graded PCGS is an MS66 full bands and that's worth 2000 bucks so let's take a look at them we have a D here a P here and an S here this is a Philadelphia Mint one, and this is from an uncirculated mint set. Uh, but back in 1991, there wasn't any difference. In, in other words, they didn't put any satin finishes or anything on these, so you can't tell the difference between an uncirculated mint set coin and a regular issue coin unless uh, it's in the packaging still, and this one isn't. Again, it's a clad coin, copper, nickel, clad, copper. Again, we go on to the back, and we see what the... Um, best coins from 1991 that were in circulation look like. And look at this. You can't hardly see the bands going down at all. You certainly can't see um, these cross bands or any separation. You can't see any detail there. You can tell that's an acorn and those are olives. But in 1991 at the Philadelphia Mint, they made 927 million. At the Denver Mint, they made 601 million. So 1.5 billion of these were made and they just rushed them through. This P is not the greatest P, but it did hit, you know, it is on there. Um, we look at the numbers, we see one of the things that they did pretty well with the 1991s was get the In God We Trust. Now, a lot of times that's where you see them not quite stamped right. Sometimes it's the one over here, but often it's the In God We Trust. And you can remember these from some of our other coins. The In God We Trust kind of fades out like this. Here's a 1991 where it does fade out. Uh, let me see if I got another 1991 where it does fade out. Look at this one. This is what we see a lot in these older dimes. The one and the in God we over here fading out. In the 1991 regular pressing coins, they did a great job on these. So you don't see many fade outs on these. In fact, these ones are actually uh, usually pretty good. So the Philadelphia Mint, this is one of the 927 million and at the Denver Mint, which we have here, and this one's a nice one. Again, an uncirculated mint set coin, a little scratchy, but fine. The Ingravi Trust is just great. All the numbers and letters, that's a great D. Everything looks good. And then you turn it on to the back and you see that this is one of the better ones you'll ever see. Uh, but even so, we don't have the full bands going across here. And even going down, we don't have great bands and the torch looks not so great. So, what do we got for these? Well, at the Philadelphia Mint, in uh, the highest graded one they ever had at PCGS is a MS67 full bands. That's worth about $2,100. So if you can just get up to MS67, you're going to be talking in the 2000s. And for the Denver Mint, the best they've ever had graded at PCGS is an MS66 full bands, and that's worth 2000 bucks. If we're talking about full bands on the 1991 Roosevelt dime, you've heard the old expression, you'll know it when you see it. Well, this is what it looks like right here. And we know it because we can actually see it on the PCGS website. It a Mint State 66 full bands. This is what it looks like. Now let's use the magnifier on the PCGS website to kind of look at those bands. We see the top band goes all the way across through there. It's really scratchy as it goes down here. And there's the bottom band there. And you can see that that bottom band is not the greatest, but this is one of the best times they've ever seen from 1966. So that kind of talks about the quality control that year. If we scroll down on the side here, we see that PCGS is actually graded a Mint State 67. It's never been sold, but they value it at $2,150 for Mint State 67 from Philadelphia. And if you just go up to the top and click over one to the Denver Mint versions, we'll see that they don't have a picture for the Denver Mint versions, but the best they've ever found in Denver is this Mint State 66, and PCGS graded it and values it at $2,250 for kind of probably a scratched up, not the greatest ever, Denver Mint dime from 1991. One of the strangest letter S's that I've seen in quite a while right here for the San Francisco Mint, just the way that it hit, it kind of lengthened out or flattened out a little bit on the bottom. 
And so when you look at this one, I'll tip it up a little bit more for you. You'll see how it kind of has, it tails out a little bit, has a little bit of a five look to it because it doesn't quite fill on the top. Now the regular S, like this one from the PCGS website, isn't hugely better, but it's much more proportioned. And so if we look at it right there, you see that kind of much more even through the center. The bottom's a little bit longer, but the top is much more proportional. That's how these dimes usually look. One of the other dimes from PCGS will see that that one has a, an even more of a bulb on it. So many of these S's are gonna have this kind of bulb down here or not quite fit. And that's why we call them the big bottom or large bottom S's. It says Liberty in front of Roosevelt and God we trust under his chin. Way down here there's a J and an S for John Sinek, who was the engraver of this coin. Uh, these coins first came out in 46, 1946. Uh, the San Francisco Mint, this is a clad coin, it's not a silver coin. And we can see that just really shiny and nice looking. We flip it over onto the back and we see that these bands, sometimes they call it a FT or full torch, other times they call it an FB or full bands. Either way, what you need to have is all the lines going down the torch this way and show them to you. And this one's so shiny that it's hard to do. So the lines going down this way, the lines going across at the top with a separation between them, at the bottom with a separation between them. And we kind of got that too. We can see the acorns, we can see the olive branches. So on the back it says United States of America, at the top one dime at the bottom, e pluribus unum across the center here. At the San Francisco Mint in 1991, they made 2.9 million. Uh, this one is worth about $3 because they've already identified 1,500 proof 70s from 1991. If you have 1,500 deep cameo proof 70s, the price is not going to be very high. It's only 20 something dollars for the best coin you can get, 20 something dollars. That seems unfair, doesn't it? But that's kind of how well they did at San Francisco. A proof 69 is, could be worth 12 to $16. Even if this is a proof 67 or close, it's only gonna be worth a few dollars and it's probably only a proof 65, three bucks, I'd say. If you can just get up to full bands and get it at anything over MS65 uh, with the regular coins, you're talking about a huge amount of money. If you if you do that with the San Francisco Mint coins, you're not talking about much money at all. And that's all we have today from DC Coin World International Coin Channel. We'd like to have you subscribe to the channel, leave any comments you might have in the comments section.